I'd like to discuss today the early repolarization ECG pattern uh, and assess whether this is a training-related phenomenon or, or indeed a marker of occult heart disease. Now, uh, I'm aware that some of you may not be that uh, uh, familiar with ECGs and in particular the, the ER pattern. And so just to go through the definition, we're talking about J-point elevation and for the purpose of this talk in the inferior and lateral leads. So we won't be talking about the anterior leads, uh, as Professor Corrado just alluded to. And the definition is of uh, one, one millimeter or 0.1 millivolt of J-point elevation in two consecutive inferior and or lateral leads. People talk about different morphologies of J-point elevation, and you'll hear the term notching for a, a positive upstroke in the terminal R wave, compared to slurring, where you get a continuous movement from the QRS into the ST segment. And very importantly, we can also differentiate subtypes of ER by the gradient of the following a ST segment. So this example, you have this uh, rapidly ascending ST segment with a positive gradient uh, 110 milliseconds after the J points. The other forms, which we'll see later, being horizontal ST types. So this is not a new phenomenon. The ER pattern has been described for more than 50 years. This is one of the commonly cited early descriptions by Wasserberger and colleagues. And they noted this prominent notch or slurring of the terminal QRS portion with associated concave ST elevation. And this was not that uncommon and particularly more common in young men, those of black ethnicity and professional athletes. And it was thought to be an entirely benign finding and really garnered very little interest. That all changed in 2008 with the publication, firstly, of this case control study by Hassiger and colleagues where they found that this inferior and lateral ER pattern was significantly more common in survivors of otherwise unexplained cardiac arrest than it was in age and sex match controls. And furthermore, those individuals with early repolarization were more likely to have recurrent therapy from their ICD during the follow-up period. Further concern arose uh, the following year this published uh, this publication was of a, a cohort of 11,000 middle-aged Finnish individuals. And it was shown that, again, over a long follow-up period, so 20, 30 years, those individuals with early repolarization, particularly in the inferior leads and particularly of large amplitude, had a worse prognosis in terms of death from cardiac causes. The same group went, then, then went on to refine this ER phenotype and they divided ER into two subgroups by the ST gradient. On the left-hand panel, you can see the ascending ST type. This is the type uh, similar to the original Wasserberger uh, description, and that commonly seen in athletes. And that was shown not to confer any increased risk of arrhythmic death. In comparison, ER with a horizontal ST segment was shown to be significantly associated with an increased risk of death over many years. And there have been several similar publications since all performed in middle-aged individuals and again showing similar results. This is an example of the ascending ER type. This is taken from uh, a Tour de France cyclist and you can see in the inferior and particularly the lateral leads this J-point elevation with the rapidly ascending ST segment. You may also notice other exercise training related ECG uh, findings in this individual with voltage criteria for left ventricular hypertrophy sinus bradycardia and sinus arrhythmia, and first-degree heart block. In comparison, this ECG is taken from uh, a cardiac arrest survivor. Again, there is J-point elevation, this time in the inferior leads, but you'll see that the ST segment is uh, very, very different with a, a descending pattern. So what about athletes? In general, ER is very common in athletes. The pre reported prevalence is between 30 and 50%. Um, and this graph is taken from a study in 2011 that showed that the prevalence does vary from sport type. And in general, the endurance sports have a, a higher prevalence. This also shows that the majority of ER seen in athletes is in the lateral leads. The same study compared the prevalence of ER at the start of the season, which was already very high, 30% of athletes, and then again after a period of training and showed that the prevalence goes up after a period of athletic training. This was more pronounced in endurance athletes, so these are rowers compared to American football players. And it's, you can see a peak prevalence of 60%, so extremely common. In general, the prognosis in athletes is thought to be benign, 
although the cohort studied are in general small and follow-up periods are, are rather short. There is just one paper that raises the possibility of a poorer prognosis in athletes with ER. This is a table from that paper by Capato and colleagues. And they compared 21 athletic cardiac arrest survivors or, or victims of sudden cardiac death to th 365 athletic controls. And they found that inferior and lateral J-point elevation was more common in those cardiac arrest victims than it was in the healthy controls. And also the presence of QRS slurring was more common in the cardiac, cardiac arrest victims. However, when you look into this study, there are a couple of striking things. Firstly, this is the, the prevalence of the ER pattern in the uh, cardiac arrest victims, so it's just under 30%. And actually, when you compare it to other studies looking at the prevalence of ER, this is not that different to the background prevalence. For some reason, the control group in, this, in the capacity study had a very low incidence, and obviously this has a significant effect on the statistical analysis that they did. Furthermore, if you look at the illustrations in the paper, this is their control athletes with the ascending type, as we've seen before, and the, the common type seen in athletes. And interestingly, the image they decided to show of their cardiac arrest victim shows this ER with a horizontal ST uh, segment. Certainly, the European Society of Cardiology were quite clear in this report in published in 2010. Several of, of the authors are present here today. And they're all very happy that the ER pattern is physiological and benign and requires no further clinical evaluation. And many of you will be familiar with this uh, dichotomy of group one and group two ECG changes. So on the left are the ECG changes commonly seen in athletes and related to athletic training uh, and unrelated and less common changes on the right. And there sits early repolarization in group one. Now I'd like to move on and uh, show some of the ongoing research from, from our service. This is a, a study of just over 7,000 individuals who were screened through this CRI program between 2006 and 2013. The population is young, mainly male and almost exclusively Caucasian, and takes in a wide number of uh, athletic abilities uh, from sedentary individuals right through to a minority of national and international standard athletes. And what we showed was that in, indeed the prevalence of ER is very common in these young individuals, nearly 21% across the whole cohort. If you split down by subtypes, uh, the majority, of, this is the ascending type, uh, and 50% is in the inferior leads, the minority being the high amplitude that's shown to have the worst prognosis. You compare this to the Finnish study in middle-aged populations, and you can see that the prevalence is significantly higher driven mainly by this excess of the ascending ST type and also of the widespread infralateral type. And I apologise for this busy slide, but this is just showing some of the ECG and demographic associations with the various ER subtypes. So on the left we have the odds ratios associated with the ascending ST type and then here the horizontal type. I'd just like to draw your attention to a couple of these variables. Firstly, gender. The ascending ST type is significantly associated with male gender, whereas conversely, the horizontal pattern is seen relatively more common in females. If we move on to ethnicity, again, black ethnicity is associated with the ascending pattern, but there is no significant association of ethnicity for the horizontal pattern. So already we're getting a feel that these two phenotypes are very different. When you look through the ECG characteristics, both subtypes are associated with, with slower heart rates, longer PR intervals, narrow, narrow QRSs. Just the odds ratios look small, but the, each of these odds ratios is for a single unit change in the variable. So this is a, a half a percent increase for every one millisecond of the PR interval lengthening, uh, and similarly for QRS width. The presence of LVH was strongly associated with the ascending pattern and less so with the horizontal pattern. And finally, there is a, a striking negative association with all types and an RSR pattern. When you look at the comparisons head-to-head, -head, so this is comparing the relative frequency in the ascending and horizontal pattern, with a ratio greater than one suggestive of being seen more commonly in the horizontal pattern and less than one more commonly in the ascending pattern, 
we see that several variables are not important, but that male sex, black ethnicity, lower heart rates, narrow QRS, and the presence of LVH all are associated with the ascending pattern in comparison to the horizontal pattern. So further evidence of uh, separate phenotypes. What about the role for phys physical activity? As I said, our cohort had, was, was very large and, and included a, a wide variety of sporting abilities and sporting volumes. There was also a wide variety of sports played. We classify the sports by their dynamic components similar to the Mitchell criteria. So these are low, medium and, and high aerobic uh, components. And you can see that just over two thirds of our cohort participated in this high dynamic component type sports. When we look at the effect of exercise type, you can see that as you move from sedentary through to low, medium and high aerobic component exercise, there is an increasing prevalence of the ascending ER pattern and a, a slight negative or no impact on the horizontal pattern. So two very different responses to exercise type. We see similar things with exercise volume. So this is hours per week of exercise along the bottom, moving from sedentary individuals to very active individuals. And again, you see an increase in the prevalence of the ascending ST type and a relative decrease in the horizontal ST type. Now, obviously, these are just gross prevalences, and we've seen before that there are lots of statistical interactions in this group. So when you account for all those in this multivariable analysis, you find that there is still a significant effect of exercise on the two types. And we see that for every single hour of physical activity, there is a 3% increase in the chance of seeing the ascending pattern and a corresponding 3% decrease in the horizontal pattern. So two very different responses to exercise. When we looked further into this, we found that the differences between males and females were significant. On the left-hand side, you can see the panels relating to, to male individuals, and they are, as described before, with exercise associated with the ascending ER type. However, in females, exercise appears to have no, no effect on these gross unadjusted prevalences. When you feed these into our multivariable analysis, you do in fact see that there is a striking difference in the response to exercise in males, whereas in females, the lines cross and there is no effect of, of exercise. So our conclusions were that the ER pattern is very common in young adults, and there is indeed a dose-dependent relationship between exercise and the ascending form of ER in males only. We also see that the ascending type is associated with other group one or training-related phenomenon where, they, where there is less association with the horizontal type. So we recommend that the horizontal and ascending subtypes of ER should be considered as separate phenotypes. We've shown that they have a different gender predilection, a different ethnic predilection, and also a different response to exercise. And it's been shown before in large cohort studies that they do, in fact, have a different prognosis as well. So how might next year's or, or any future ECG recommendations for athletes uh, change? You, as you can see, ER is comfortably there in the common and training-related ECG patterns. I hope you'd agree that we've shown that that's not entirely the case and the fact that this should probably be replaced with ascending STER in the group one common and training related ECG changes, whereas the horizontal ST segment is uncommon in athletes and is not related to, to training at all. We need to now go on and, and look at the prognosis of these two groups in, in our young cohort, which is work work is ongoing. We have around 40,000 patient years worth of follow-up, which sounds big but still may not be enough to identify any statistical differences, and hopefully we'll be able to bring that information early next year. Thank you.